This is Andy Pure for Boxing News. I'm joined by trainer Ben Davison here in London. Ben, before we come on to all the good stuff, how's love treating you? All good, thanks you. I'm very well, thank you. Very well, we're here in London. Um, the announcement of your man's next fight, Anthony Joshua. Um, Daniel Dubois, the opposite corner, is talking about this fight. For yourself, why do you feel like it's the right fight? And what do you feel that Daniel's now going to pose in terms of a threat to Anthony Joshua? Yeah, I feel like he's had a, a few really good wins. He's, he's in good momentum and he's obviously now been upgraded to the heavyweight champion of the world and uh, it's an opportunity for AJ to become three-time heavyweight champion of the world which is a you know historical achievement so um, phenomenal. <laughs> I was going to point this out we've got Darren Barker flicking a wire <laughs> across your face there Ben so apologies if you get struck uh, but yeah the Daniel Dubois that we're seeing now a much more improved version much more confident version there was a lot of doubters that were questioning his commitment his heart his desire when the going got tough but these last couple of performances have answered all of those you saw him against Filip Pergovic what did you take away from that performance yeah I think he showed a lot of grit a lot of determination um, weathered the storm and um, managed to come out on top and, and that's what he needed to do and uh, he was success successful in that Save from his most recent performances against Joel Miller and Filip Pergovic what do you think have been the most standout improvements that you've seen in Daniel um Probably probably his experience. I think Don's probably done a good job at um, Don's got a good way of he's a straight talker. He'll encourage you and he's your biggest supporter and your biggest fan when you're his fighter. Um but he's also a straight talker and he's going to tell you how it is. And I think that, uh, you know, if, if he's known Daniel's going to be in for a rough ride, you know, he's probably told him and, and encouraged him. And he's probably been prepared to go through some rough moments that he's probably expected. And uh, it seems that way anyway. And he's managed to get through them in, in, in his last two fights. Obviously for your man, for Anthony Joshua, this will be seen now as the toughest test since you two have started working together. How do you envisage this fight playing out? A lot of people will expect fireworks, they'll expect to see a knockout from either man at some point. Do you anticipate the same? Yeah, I do. I'm really confident in an AJ knockout, being honest. I think that Daniel's strengths play into AJ's hands, as well as his weaknesses. Um, so I think I do. I like, I like the fight for, for AJ. One thing people were pulling up from the Hergovic fight with Daniel was kind of in those early rounds, Daniel was getting hit consecutively to the head, something that a lot of people question if that was Anthony Joshua in the opposite corner, might not have been able to stand up to it. Do you take confidence from kind of those early rounds in particular? No, not really, because that could end up being a, a positive for them, because they could go away and, and look at, right, OK, we need to, you know, that's that's a flaw that's, that's been brought to light, and they'll go away and work on that. So um, definitely don't bank on, on uh, you know, certain certain things from, from a single fight. Um, We'll go over numerous things to ensure that some of the things that we'll work towards are, are regular tendencies. You mentioned as well this is for the full version of the IBF title. Um, AJ has made no secret of wanting to become world champion. And Eddie Hearn has said it, you've said it in interviews, but you also said that you'd love the opportunity to run back some of those defeats on his record. What in the end kind of stood out more for AJ? Was it the chance we've and with Daniel Dubois to win the world title or were any of those other opportunities presented? Yeah, the other opportunity with the Usyk thing isn't there at the minute, so I think this was the next best thing, but um, you know, hopefully this leads to the opportunity for him to, to fight Usyk again. How much does that one still whet your own appetite to hopefully be in his corner for a potential Usyk trilogy? Yeah, I'm very confident that if the opportunity come about that, that AJ would be successful in that, but... Uh, full focus on Daniel Dubois right now. Just to take me back to that fight, just because to link him with Usyk, what did you make of the Fury Usyk fight? Now you can reflect. Uh, an amazing event, an amazing fight. For, uh, as I said before, I think that there's going to be ebbs and flows, which I feel like there was. I think there was going to be adjustments from both sides, like I think there was. And um, you know, it was a tight fight, and I look forward to, to seeing them do it again. Do you expect it to be as tight in the rematch? Um... Possibly, but hey, there may be a stoppage from either side as well, so 
yeah, it's uh, big fights like that. We're all intrigued to see again because it was a competitive fight. It was a really good fight and um, a few adjustments from both sides and the fight could look very different. Why did AJ come through in September, Ben? Are you more confident now that it will lead to a potential undisputed path of his own, um, given how kind of a fight to be made a lot more easily now? That's the plan. That's the plan. Um, just whilst I've got you, obviously, some other fights on the card I want to ask you about and good. talk to you about. Um, Josh Kelly and Liam Beefy Smith, what do you make of that one? Really good fight. Uh, amazing fight. I think the whole card's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, we're in the back behind everything here, so you can't Yeah, see no, phenomenal. So, really excited. What would you make of Kelly and Smith? Um, I think we'll have to see how Josh has improved from his uh, last couple of wins and see where Liam's at um, in his career as well. But... I think it's, uh, that, that's what makes for it to be an intriguing fight. But Watsi Hutchinson as well, another intriguing one. What are your thoughts on that one, Ben? Willie really impressed me in the last fight. Um, but Watsi is a step up again from, from Craig Richards, but he rose to the occasion, Willie. Um, I hadn't seen too much of him before that, but I'd heard from a lot of people about how good he is and all the rest of it. And, uh, you know, he, he really performed well um, that night. So, um, but I really rate Josh Boatsi as well. So. That one, uh, that one whets the appetite as well. And that's, that's like I said, every, every fight on there is uh, is great. One fight that's not on there, which was mentioned, is another man from your gym, uh, Fabio Wardley. There was a lot of talk of a potential Fraser Clark rematch taking place on this card. Can you tell me as to why it didn't quite land? I don't know. I, uh, you know, you have to speak to to Fabio or his management team. Um, but yeah, it's a shame because. It would have been good to, to see that one again. I'm sure everyone's dying to see that one again. Is there still a confidence in, in the camp that it will be the fight which takes place next night? It might not be in September, but... I don't really know. Fabio's just come back in the gym, so he's working away just at the start of, of things. So I, I think he's seeing... seeing. I think that his team is seeing what they can do. Um, but, yeah, I think that's that, that, that would be or should be the, the, the main priority, but it's just a case of whether that, that can get done. Um, final one from me, Ben. Lee Wood, what's the latest with Lee? Lee had a bit of an illness, like I said, he's starting to come through that now. Um, so, we got the news that obviously Warrington's boxing yes. Kakachi. Um, but hey, look, Lee will now have to, have to chase the winner. Was Lee kind of in the frame at all for that fight, if, if obviously Warrington was mentioned? He was, just there was a couple of reasons. Like I said, Lee's, Lee's had this bit of an illness, so September might have been a touch little bit too soon also just being 100% honest um, you know our commitment has got to be with AJ and uh, our time and focus has got to be with AJ for this card and this fight um, so yeah you know Lee sort of understood that and uh, yeah it just, it just didn't make sense for for us because they was both going to it would have impacted our performance for both fighters, which is the wrong thing to do. How are you finding that aspect, Ben? Obviously, we had a brief chat there off camera. You're a busy man. You've got a stacked gym. Um, how are you finding trying to keep juggling every every fighter in there? Yeah, we manage it, you know. And, and, and what's amazing about it is that they all help each other out. We've got a number of heavyweights, uh, a number of a super bantamweight, featherweight, super featherweights. Um, they all help each other out. We've got stacked well weight like well weight little little package as well so um they all help each other in, in preparation and prepare which is uh which is phenomenal and um you know i've got great team with um barry and lee which uh which help out as well so you know the results show that the, the work that we're doing is um is good Start getting Lee to do some pads with a fighter soon? Yeah. <laughs> nah, look, but again, though, like, we're not massive on the whole pad work front. I think that done in the wrong way, it can, it can actually, or, or done with the wrong focus fights, just want to hit pads. You're going in there with the wrong mentality. They're trying to punch the pads as hard, as hard and as fast and as sharp as they can. You need to be going in there looking to work on, work on things, different situations, different scenarios, uh, against different things that opponents are trying to do. So, you know, sometimes we do sessions with the lads where it's just shadow boxing. Sometimes we do sessions with the lads where they're just working the bag. Uh, sometimes we'll do 
tech, tech sparring where they're just working on scenarios. One, like I said, the guys will help each other out. So one of our other fighters will go in there and mimic something of an opponent to help out a fellow teammate. And, uh, you know, that's why it's, uh, it's a great environment in the gym as well, because not only does the work, the main focus of the work is slightly different, but I really like the fact that the lads are more than, more than willing to help each other out as well. Ben, it's a pleasure as always. You're going to be a busy man today, so thanks for speaking to me and good luck with the rest of the preparations for September. Thanks, mate. Thank you.